Hello. So if I wanted to create a vector in Bifrost, what I can do is create a value node and come to that option here and uh, use a three component vector in this case. And here I've got a vector, which is a, in this case, a data structure with three components. And if I hover over this output port at the bottom, I can see math flow three. So in Bifrost, whenever we see math flow three, then we know we're dealing with a three-dimensional vector. And I can use this to describe a point position in space. I could also use it for color, but in these videos, I'm going to uh, stick with points and uh, moving them around. So if I want to actually see that point, I have to create a point object. And uh, I happen to have this connection already here. So now I can see the point at 1, 2, 0. So we go 1 in X and 2 in Y and 0 in Z or Z. And that's where we get the point. And we can represent vectors as arrows. So if I want to draw that arrow, I have a little compound here. You can ignore this. It's just for visualization. Then here I've got the arrow representing this vector here. And this arrow uh, has two properties. It's got a direction, should be pretty obvious. It's an arrow, and it's also got a length. And so these two properties are incredibly useful for moving points, right? Because if we move a point, we want to move it in a certain direction, and we also want to move it a certain amount. So with this data structure, we can do that. And... Um, I think this is all pretty straightforward. There's a, something that's a little bit confusing, uh, potentially, um, and that's the idea that it does not matter where I move this vector or this arrow. It's still going to be this vector. And because this vector, essentially, it's just saying, wherever you are, go 1 in X and 2 in Y, and then draw a line or an arrow between those two points, right? So maybe that's a bit confusing, but I think it'll become a little clearer uh, along the way when we talk about all these operations um, in the coming videos. And uh, But I can show you another example from a Maya point of view. So if I create a locator here, and this is the world space coordinate, right? I can group this control G and now this locator is a child of that group. So if I move that group and then reselect the locator, we can see these numbers didn't change, but clearly it's not at 420 because that would be uh, here. So what we have to say then that this locator is relative to its parent. And I think it's the same deal with vectors, right? But anyway, in the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, multiplication by a scalar. Cheers.